Hi everyone and welcome to our presentation today from Anne Lyle. Um, uh, Anne obviously is, is, you're working at ANU, is that right? Yes? Australian National University. That's yes, right. that's right. So um, yes, so she'll be talking to us today about um, the, the, what work they're up to. I'm going to hand it straight over to you, Jill, so you can tell us all about yourself. Thanks, Wendy. Hello and good morning from Canberra on this lovely sunny morning after a, a night of heavy rain. It's cleared up. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, so wherever you are, um, I hope you're having a lovely day like us. Um, so I'm just going to keep my, um, uh, my webcam on for a few minutes while I introduce myself and then I think I might turn it off just so that we can concentrate on the presentation. Um, I'm from the ANU Online Centre and Australian National University, um, which we, we are um, mostly educational designers and developers. Um, and this presentation is going to be um, a um, sharing of a story um, and it's going to be uh, telling about a process that we went through in helping the medical school at ANU um, try to find a way to give their uh, students a better user experience. Uh, a process that we're still involved with at the moment. Um, we don't have a lot of people, so um, I'm, I'm happy if people want to turn their microphones on at any stage and indicate that they've got something to say. We can have a bit of a discussion um, around some of these things because some of the issues I'm bringing up are things that um, are very common to educational design in institutions of higher education. And I've already had a bit of a chat with Melanie from Kansas in the US and she works for Department of Corrections and runs a Moodle site and we already compared notes on some of the constraints that we deal with in using an LMS like Moodle in a large organisation um, with thousands of users. So I think that's uh, some of the issues that I'm going to be talking about um, are, are, not, are not new but uh, maybe um, trying to uh, look at it in, with fresh eyes in, in the evolving context of, um, of online learning. So I'm just going to turn my head my, sorry, not my headset, my webcam came off. And uh, as I said, we're sharing our story. Um, and I must give thanks to uh, Dr. Katie Freund, my colleague, and Dr. Alexandra Webb from the medical school, Lyndall Thorne from the medical school, and Crystal McLaughlin from ANU Online. They are the people who worked with me on this project. Um, and well, basically, I was assisting um, Katie Freund, who was the senior educational designer. And so, uh, the issues and the information that I'm sharing here are really part of their work as well. Um, and uh, just to mention that the the medical school staff um, were more than happy for me to share and are uh, very interested in learning and um, way, learning ways to make their course more user friendly for their students. So this quote, um, we do not learn from experience, we learn from reflecting on experience, really uh, sit, sort of um, was resonated for me. Um, it's supposed to be possibly a John Dewey quote, but there is some doubt about that. So I have to be honest and just say it's a random um, quote I found under John Dewey on the internet. Um, I did see it used somewhere else and that's why I liked it. Then I tried to find the source of it, but I couldn't actually find a direct attribution from John Dewey. But the idea that we learn from reflecting, not actually the experience itself to me, um, certainly is something that I've experienced in this uh, project that we worked on. That we, the whole process all, all the way through was a reflective process, not just on the part of the educational designers, but also um, on the part of the academics who, were work, who we were collaborating with in the medical school. So first of all, the course um, was really a series of courses in a, a program um, in the ANU Medical School. Um, it's a four-year integrated curriculum. In other words, it's not uh, your typical university course where you do year one and it's based on two semesters in which you do discrete discipline subjects. It's actually, well, it's often only a single discipline and with different subjects within it. It actually contains many different disciplines and they're integrated across all four years and there's a lot of going to and fro between the materials from first year right through to uh, the fourth year. Uh, it is a blending, blended learning model and the online is only one aspect of um, 
systems are learning. Um, and online is also used for organising the many complex aspects of being a medical student. So it is the online part that we're looking at um, with critical appraisal eyes and uh, probably largely as educational designers as well as teachers. Um, they use a problem-based learning approach um, like a lot of medical courses and they are great teachers, they use great resources and it is a very high quality course and highly regarded. So we're not really critiquing the course or the program as a whole. What we're looking at is how they've organised things on the Moodle LNS and how that can be improved, which is where they asked us for help. So the source of the pain, as I put it, um, because you don't really do anything until you feel some pain or you feel an itch somewhere and you've got to do something about it. And that's the way I saw it um, because we, we were approached by the medical school when they felt the need to do something. Um, so the online um, component and the relationship of it to other components was the source of a lot of the angst and problems that people were experiencing. And this combined with particular needs of a medical course, which um, yesterday when I gave this presentation, I did have some people that were um, in a medical in a medical context who recognised the, what I was talking about, which I'll go into more as we go through this. Then there's the constraints of the learning management system itself um, and then the constraints of the institutional instance of the learning management system due to the institution's privacy, security and IT policies. Um, especially when you're an institution of higher education with many thousands of users, um, it, any little, any, even any small change or the addition of a small plug-in or something can actually cause heaps of work and lot, needs lots of testing and even when it's tested and everyone's happy and it goes ahead, you can still get problems. So um, it, it's all of those kind of issues that combine um, uh, with looking at what the experience of the um, users for the um, ANU medical course. So the context was the Doctor of Medicine and Surgery program at ANU, a four-year integrated course that is holistic um, in the best sense of the word. It is holistic. They're trying to produce uh, highly skilled um, doctors at the end and um, it's an integrated curriculum and it's very work-based integrated as well. As with any medical course, they don't um, they start early in the program in going out and seeing real patients in real hospitals and other medical workplaces. So this is the context that we're dealing with. So it was a journey of discovery for um, the educational designers and developers like myself. I had never really worked with medical education before. So I learnt a great deal and we discovered that medical courses are first of all vocational and practice practical. Um, students practice in real medical settings with real people. Um, the, it's very administration intensive um, in that it requires interfacing with external medical institutions and personnel um, and there's, there's a lot of scat scattered uh, situations in which it operates, including headquarters in ANU, two hospitals and a number of remote and rural sites where the students go to practice. Um, they need easy access to current medical research and resource reposit repositories and that's critical to their training because they're out there in the real world and if they're not up with the latest then that could cause problems, could even cause problems for the individual patients. So these are the specific um, issues that we learned around um, medical courses that seem to be more urgent and sharply defined than in other areas and other disciplines. The question that came up in our minds after we had been working for some time and consulting with people and looking at different options that we, that we could probably put forward to help solve some of the issues was are these issues very different from issues facing all higher education courses? in relation to learning management systems and institutional constraints. Um, in, a, in an um, environment in which education is becoming more, um, it's becoming broader and it's becoming more accepted that it should be more situational, um, applied 
um, relevant to the workplace, even in um, universities that's becoming more of a, a drive now than just purely theoretical behind high walls in which we just sit and theorise, becoming more and more the case that universities are expecting to and, and being expected to integrate more with the real world um, tasks that people will have to do on graduation. So this is obvious with med medicine but is it becoming also the case with other types of courses and there is growing literature on looking at the, the learning management systems and appreciating their, their strong points which is why they've had such a spectacular growth and but also looking at well what can we do now that goes beyond what the learning management system has achieved or can the learning management system move on to a next generation um, that meets the needs of current um, learning and work. So um, I looked at the Horizon report 2017, um, I'm not sure whether uh, how many other people here might have looked at that and seen that they've made some interesting um, observations and one of them is about the need for agility to support practices of the future and to unbundle all the components of the learning experience, remix open content in unique and compelling ways. So we've got a connected world and we've got lots of open content out there but it's very difficult to integrate it into the existing, uh, what has been referred to by somebody as a wall garden of the learning management system. Now there is a reference at the end of my of my presentation in which that person who said that is listed but at the moment I'm sorry I can't think who it is but I thought wall garden is quite a nice <laughs> way to put it. Um, Christina's just shared it. Uh, yeah that's right. Well I've also got the link there as well so yeah anyone that's interested go ahead and have a look. It's, it's quite a challenging thing. So any, anyone that's got any comments to make about the, that question I just raised, please feel free to either turn your mic on and say something or otherwise write something about what you think in the, um, in the text box. Now the next chart I've got here or um, illustration, um, I found yesterday that it was very difficult for me to read it in, on that size screen and I'm sure that you can't read it either. So if I put it onto uh, the, the fuller screen. I'm not sure if that affects how you see it but I think you can put it on full screen. So when I do that so that I can address it, um, I won't see your comments for a few minutes because it hides the comments but just explaining that I'm going to put mine on on the full. There's a little uh, window, little square right in the right hand corner of the presentation where you can make it bigger. I'm just going to go through some of the other things. Yeah. <coughs> So this represents um, all of the things that the medical school was needing and trying to get met through Moodle. Now the history of this, which I haven't mentioned and I should have, is that prior to um, re deciding to join the institutional tool that was available, which was the Moodle learning management system, the medical school had their own bespoke solution that an individual had created on a website which solved all their admin problems and all of their rostering as well as their um, providing learning materials etc all on one website. Unfortunately usually um, in these kind of situations when there's one person who comes up with a lovely solution unless that person is going to stay there until they're very old <laughs> um, for a long time uh, they tend to be unsustainable because it's quite complex what this person did and once they left there wasn't anybody who could really take over and run it in the same way. So the medical school leadership realised that they really had to get with the times um, and, and use the institutional platform that was there. The only thing is that from our point of view as educational designers, the Moodle platform is for education, it's for teaching and learning, it's not primarily for administration. It might have some administrative functions such as tracking students and assessment records and so on but it, that it can't cover the breadth of administrative um, issues that the medical school required. So uh, it has, um, the course has approximately 2,400 plus teaching events across four, a four year program in any given semester with specific resources attached to each. So you know the students need to access the resources um, for each session specifically. Um, <coughs> there's many overlapping groups and subgroups of students and staff so you don't just have four years, you have 
you have like subgroups of different clinical uh, experience um, groups within those years. Um, so there's an issue with timetabling um, for all the different sessions and groups and so on um, and making sense of that. Um, there's also the issue of communicating across all years and within all the subgroups for each year. So announcements like don't forget to go to this special talk by Dr. So-and-so on such and such a date. It's just an example. There's so many, there's so many events and so many things happening and the communication is absolutely critical. Um, you've got clinical staff that are rostered on to, uh, to tutor um, and also demonstrate with groups of students. You've got um, access requirements from external clinical tutors which doesn't always seem to work properly or they can't always access the ANU systems. Um, we realise that that's, you know, that is a problem for admin people, IT people and so on but it's been an ongoing issue student practicum rotations. So the students are going out there and they're on rosters and these rosters need to be published and able to be seen by different people. And of course, last but not least, you've got your learning activities and your content, which is where what we're interested in and all these other things kind of hit us like little bombs to say, oh, there's this and there's that and there's that. So going back to the very first square on the left hand side, um, this they try to replicate Med Online, which they're which was their bespoke website that they had previously by using a customised plugin for Moodle that somebody designed to control everything. And it was a very complex um, arrangement and very difficult to maintain in the, um, in the context of you know, hundreds and hundreds of students and so many different databases and so on. So this isn't, I'm not really trying to show you this uh, document so that you can read it in any detail. I'm just trying to give you the impression of the complexity of what the plugin was trying to do. So there's a row of databases across the top and these databases are meant to feed into um, the sections of Moodle courses and do all these different functions. So you can see that uh, it doesn't take much like it would take an update of a theme or some other update from Moodle to disrupt this whole flow. And over the years, a lot of these connections were corrupted and a lot of things didn't work and students couldn't find resources that were meant to be attached to certain programs and so on. So I'm going to go back to my smaller screen <coughs> and hope that you were able to see some of that. Um, so just wondering if anyone's got any comments about, about the situation so far. So this is what we were faced with when the um, staff came to us and said, can you help us make a better user experience for the students? Um, and that they were basically dominated by this plugin. And I'm just wondering what you think of a plugin like that for in this context. And what you think might be the problem with it. Plugin sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah, it, it was an interesting um, solution and it was basically probably quite well designed and um, did some amazing things. But as you say, yes, plugins are hard to support, especially when you have so many updates happening to the LMS. Um, anything can be broken very easily. So we were looking at something that was basically dominated by the plugin um, and, and, and it dictated the online course design and for us as educational designers, this was a bit of a shock because <laughs> there was, <coughs> uh, as I said, 2400 classes. Um, the staff and the students wanted a timetable that had information and resources attached to each class session. And what they did was they, they created the classes in the Moodle sections. So they created Moodle sections for each class. And the cl plugin was customised to pull information in from the numerous databases to feed into each of those sections. And they had to create 150, well they saw that they thought they had to create 150 different courses to provide the right amount of sections for this to happen because um, you, you can only have 52 sections in the Moodle course. So they create 150 courses but they don't just create them once and that's it, they create them every year um, and they 
have to leave them there because the students still need to access them. So it's, it's tremendous complexity um, and creates huge problems for Moodle administrators and as well as users. Um, and the plugin hasn't been updated every time the Moodle updates and so it's become non-viable. So Melanie is familiar with this, this kind of problem. <laughs> Working with the Department of Corrections I'm sure would have a similar complexity, Melanie. So um, I'll just now screen, share my screen, which should work better than yesterday, hopefully, and show you what the sort of length of scroll was and the complexity of the website, of the Moodle site that the students were negotiating. So I'm going to share my screen now. Bear with me for a minute while I get it started. Okay, so this is how currently the year three looks like. Can everybody, um, I'll just go back to my big blue button so I can see your messages. Can you see my shared screen? Yeah. I can. So, <laughs> thank you. So medicine year three um, is, hasn't been worked on by us yet um, and it still looks like this. So I think we've put these quick links over here just to make things a little bit easier <laughs> for people. But everything formally was like just a big scroll. So we had a number of bulletin boards and the students were telling us that they got confused by the bulletin boards and what was on what and they'd go to the wrong one for the wrong thing. And um, So you had things that teachers and admins were just adding bit, bits when they thought they should. So other important information has been stuck in there. And we've got um, assessment items suddenly, then we've got teaching sessions and when you go to these teaching sessions you get a whole new course site with a whole lot more uh, resources, believe it or not. I won't go there because it takes too long but yeah. Um, so then there's a whole lot of hidden things here that are made available to certain people at certain times. Then there's special programs within the program with resources and there's timetables and tables of different resources, rotations, there's a special place for the rural stream, um, clinical logbook, population health is another whole area, um, teaching a session, attendance, they wanted to make sure that who, who attended these teaching sessions. So I'm going to now pause my screen sharing a bit. And you can see, um, minimize that. Um, you can see that it's a very long scroll, and you can see why the students would have um, been screaming about it. Um, and that's only one aspect of it. There's a lot more, there was a lot more pages there, a lot more stuff hidden, a lot more stuff buried in there that students have to find and a lot of it is finding resources as well that student, that lecturers share with them um, and piggledy piggledy all over the place. So any comments that you'd like to make feel free to in the, um, in the space there. So this was the pain. Um, the students and staff found the sites confusing and difficult to navigate. Um, the medical school staff approached ANU online for help. Um, and so we first, we um, when we first looked at the situation, we thought we need help. <laughs> but basically, we thought, well, we better do a bit of a consultation process. But just um, to just foreshadow what happened after we did implement a survey and um, uh, some focus groups and interviews to find out exactly what was the user experience. Um, the students, one student used the word labyrinthine which was pretty, we thought was pretty accurate. And students articulated these concerns during the review. They had difficulty finding important resources, times and dates for lectures, and there was a confusing array of forums and announcement tools. And also, I haven't added there, but I've said somewhere else that they had trouble with the calendar and syncing the calendar. And student concerns can be expressed in that they used external, they actually went to other sites to, to, do the, to find learning materials and to do some self-assessment quizzes to, so they could check their learning. Um, 
They also resorted to external sites like Google Docs and Google Drive, um, Google Docs and Facebook for collaboration and communication. They just found it easier. They could access them on their mobile phones. So they didn't find the Moodle, the Moodle environment mobile friendly. We're still looking at implementing the, the official Moodle mobile app, but there's a lot of issues. Some things don't work on it um, and so on. So we're still looking at all of that. Um, and they had calendar syncing issues. So these are the things that the students were communicating during our review. Um, and further to that, we did, um, Crystal McLaughlin, the, one of the ed developers working with us on this, did these lovely um, infographics. And you might need to enlarge your screen again just to have a look at what these infographics are telling us. Um, basically, 95% were using the laptop to access their course materials, which is predictable because mobile, because um, uh, it's not mobile friendly. It's easier to look at things on a normal browser on a laptop, and laptops are reasonably mobile for busy medical students. But note the 85% that use the mobile phones. They still persisted using their mobile phones, and they were attempting to do things. Um, within Moodle and also outside Moodle, Moodle during their course um, using mobiles because in a clinical setting, of course, doctors frequently are checking their mobile phones and trainee doctors will do the same. So those uh, figures were important. And the other infographic shows you the external sites that they went to to try and do their work and get through the course and 89% use Google Docs. And that is just, and even if you say, oh, we don't let our students use Google Docs, um, actually, you might be surprised that behind your backs, that's exactly what they're doing, because nobody can stop them from doing it. And 88% are using Facebook, um, and 74% using um, wiki uh, somethings to look up their information and so on. So large uh, use of external sites that work better for them. So some student quotes from our review um, indicate that they didn't see the learning management system as a learning tool. They only saw it as something that where their, everything was arranged administratively for them. They never thought of it as an educational tool. It's a place where you go to get lectures and information which you then use to do the education. So um, that, is, that was two interesting and revealing quotes by the students during our um, focus groups. So we were approached by um, the medical school for help. And initially, we did a review of how they were at the time, the medical school Moodle sites. And that's where we got that data I just mentioned. And this is like just a, a, a trying to represent the spiral approach that we're, we're using, um, that things were evolving as we um, as we worked. Um, so if we start at stage one here, we'd been asked for help. So the senior educational designer set up a steering committee consisting of medical staff, medical school staff, and uh, us as educational developers and designers, and also the manager of the administration side of the medical school. Initial consultations were made with all the med with key medical school staff. Sorry. To, and the, the considerations of these meetings, these consultations, backwards and forwards, they decided that we needed to do a, a, la, a fairly you know, detailed survey. And we actually went through ethics, permission, ethical, ethics processes to get research permission, etc. cetera. Um, and we did some interviews and focus groups with many dozens of staff and students, and also a large survey of students across all years. And that yielded 120 responses out of 200. So um, it was a pretty good response. From that, we did an analysis um, and wrote a report with recommendations. And the recommendations went from our, our steering committee to the decision makers. Um, but the decision makers then stalled and didn't want to make a major decision in a big rush. It would have meant having to let go of the plugin because we were telling them the plugin is no longer functional. Um, and it's probably best to get rid of it and try to find other solutions. And they asked for a limited redesign in the meantime while they considered the bigger decisions. So there we started on a new spiral, which was that the committee uh, decided that we 
have certain urgent fixes that could be implemented by the Ed Design team, which we have been doing. So I'm going to share my screen again um, and show you what we've done. Uh, nothing very amazing, um, but just trying to make it an easier navigation experience for the students. So we've, for year one, we've put everything um, into these sections uh, and by clicking on one of them, you then go to a section and tip in the settings to one section at a time. So they can see now all their important information in one place. Um, they can jump to any other section here or they can just click through to communication, um, assessment, um, and so on. So it's not quite such a big scroll. And then going to block timetable and rotations, we've invented a few buttons to go to different other different pages because each of these pages then has more links and becomes more and more complex. And within some of these other pages, there's also would have been long scrolls of PDF documents that are resources. So we would put those into what look like folders in Moodle, but I've been told they don't actually operate like folders. So, um, so that's um, how we've now arranged it. Just, it, just as an interim. And then down the side, we've got some quick links different places um, and also we've allowed this the activities menu to show so that people can go straight to activities and resources but this this is only a very superficial cosmetic fix and so now I'm going to go back to big blue, big blue button and stop screen sharing so um, yeah I think that's what we did we did do the um, the topics and we made those into collapsible topics and showing one page at a time, Melanie. That's basically what we're working with at the moment, just trying to make them a little bit more intelligible in terms of navigation, but certainly not, not anywhere near solving the problem. So we're now evaluating our, our interim redesign to see, well, did that help at all? The other thing we did was we introduced um, uh, a new tool to try and discourage, encourage the students to stay within the institutional uh, spaces rather than go out to Google Docs for collaboration. We decided to use uh, Office 365, which is part of our range of tools that we have at ANU, and we got the students into classroom notebooks for their collaboration for their PBL. So that was the other um, innovation that we introduced to see whether they, and the students, the informal feedback was the students liked what we've done so far, um, <clears throat> but there's a lot more work to do and we're now evaluating, we're in the process now of designing not, not such a big scale um, questionnaire, but just um, going back over and asking a few key questions and talking to a few key people to say, well, how did that work for you? And we'll do another analysis and small report and make some more further recommendations. And of course, then it's back in the hands of the decision makers who are the academic leadership and the administration leadership um, of the medical school and it's really out of our hands at that point. So while we were doing all of that, um, it, it, since it was a reflective process and the medical school people were reflecting on their, um, their issues and their processes as well as us, we found that things came up that we had to um, attend to and the first obvious thing is that we need a digital assets management system and that's something that is being considered by the ANU as a whole institution at the moment and we're very close to selecting a vendor. So there will be a, dis a digital assets management system of some kind that might be able to solve some of the problems of the resources that are needed and should provide us with an easy way of categor categorising those resources and linking them to specific parts of the online spaces. The other issue that came up that we were very strong about was as ed educational designers we informed them that Moodle does, is not made for HR purposes or for tracking the work of casual external clinical tutors and that they need to find an HR rostering system that will integrate with our HR system and take it away from the teaching and learning space. 
Um, the tools for collaborating and communicating in the PBL groups, um, we're trying out the Office 365, but there's other possibilities as well. We need tools for on-the-job assessment in clinical rotations, um, so we have to explore that further. And also, it would be great to have easier pathways and access bridges between health organisations and, and aid systems for both the clinical tutors and the students. And then amongst all of that, where, where does engaging content and activities fit? And how do we make sure that accessibility rules are adhered to? Because at the moment, they definitely are not accessible to um, a many, many different diverse groups of people. Um, so they're looking at Cura Cloud and Smart Sparrow, which some academics have been accessing and using. Uh, but we need to look at these tools and think about them in a considered way and how they integrate or not with the LMS. And they are also, out of this, they decided they needed to review their curriculum and think about some reforms to that as well. So they were the issues that came up. And we did some interim work on the um, navigation <coughs> and stream. We also streamlined the many communication channels and tried to give them names that made more sense to the students because uh, that is a really big key, is how you name these forums and where you put them. Uh, I've shown you what they look like now, so that's okay. So where to from here? Um, uh, a full redesign is going to be a major project requiring significant resources. We need ongoing consultation and the decision will be an institutional one, but we play a major role in we have to make strategic recommendations and will we make recommendations that lead to innovation and are visionary or will we play it safe? These are the kind of conundrums that we're dealing with um, and other educational designers that play these roles will probably recognise that. And we, there's questions that have to be dealt with, um, such as, you know, what, what commitment do they have, the medical school leadership, to provide the staffing with expertise in designing digitally enhanced learning environments and all that entails. At the moment, they're relying on a small central team from ANU that has to deal with all the, camp all the different colleges and campuses that make up ANU. And we can't favour one school over another. And most colleges have at least one or two educational designer type people in their staff. So um, the leadership have to consider that. Um, and the other issue that is a general issue that is probably something across all ANU, I mean all universities and higher education institutions is to what extent should staff, academic staff, learn the tools of the trade for online learning and to what extent should it be placed in the hands of um, who the, the people who have expertise in creating scorn objects and so on. Um, and is that a sliding scale? So that's something else that we have to think about. What, what is our availability? What are our skills? How much can they be used? And how much should academics be taught to be self-sufficient to a certain extent in creating engaging learning on, that is on, in a, within a digital environment? And finally, Related to that is an institutionally walled learning management system as a single solution to digital learning still an, a useful notion. So, there are the questions that have come up for us. And I have got a list of rel relevant references from which I um, sort of documented a lot of these ideas. Um, I'm just wondering if people have got any thoughts or comments. Feel free to turn on your sound if you want to talk or otherwise make some comments in the um, in the chat box whether you uh, these uh, issues sound familiar to you are they brand new uh, do you have any ideas that would be useful to us <laughs> and so on so, uh, that is the end of my presentation over to you for discussion if you wish sorry I haven't left you much time have I The issues you talk about make me curious. I've got a friend who graduated from med school here in the States mm, six or seven years ago, 
And now I'm curious as to how things went for him. Yeah, that's right. It'd be interesting to talk to a graduate from a medical school and just see, uh, you know, they, they, they are incredibly, what we found when we did our focus groups is they're incredibly dedicated people. They're amazing people. And yeah, the stress that they're under, um, and they just, they just, they're very smart people. They just work together. Um, and funnily enough, one year will, one year will um, form a Facebook place, and they'll form a, a strategy, and then they will appoint somebody to hand that on to the next year. This is like Facebook outside the whole system, behind the lecturers' backs. The lecturers don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Which That's is fine. Funny. Except it's okay, except there's some um, IP issues, and all, but the most important thing is that there's some, in terms of videos and materials, some of the material they're working with is of patients, and there's privacy issues, and you can have private Facebook groups, etc. But it's just a bit unnerving for the academic and other leadership in the school that students are taking this material outside a secure environment. I understand that concern. Hmm. We have the same issues in corrections, private yeah. information, including <laughs> medical information. Yep. So yeah. Yeah, you would. Exactly, yeah. And actually, I just finished building a training lecturing people about not. Um, on ethics and privacy. And, and What's more information security? information security yeah yeah don't email yourself you know sensitive information don't leave it out don't share it with people who aren't hmm. proved it's a really huge issue it really is and yet um some of those open source um things like facebook google drive google docs and all of that are so useful and so good to use when you're trying to work with other people and this and they're so natural to turn to yeah, we just wonder about what can be done about they're it. easy to use but they're also dangerous for the users because we've had people say things on facebook and they were saying them as a private citizen but at the same time they were speaking obviously as employees of ours and they've gotten fired because they said something that misrepresented our agency yeah in well, a, of course you know, that really going on. yeah, yeah in a I mean, really that, bad way and that's very different to uh, a group of medical students forming their own group that's private or hidden or whatever for their for their student activities that they're doing to get through a course to collaborate oh, yeah. on but it's, it's it's still you know it's still just i mean is the answer for something like Moodle, uh, learning management systems, to try to become more like these apps. Um, is that the answer? I don't know. Um, but I think we've actually reached our deadline now. So, um, Wendy, have, have, we, have we finished? Oh, yes. Thank you so much, Jill. And it was awesome. Thank you, Melanie, as well, for giving us a lot of feedback and having conversation there. Um, Jill, yes, thank you so much. That was really informative. Um, I'm sure it's a great help to many of us um, who having issues with those sort of things and um, don't forget anybody if you're interested you can keep chatting online on the forums um, for each session um, and if anybody else is interested in seeing this presentation of course that they can watch that online thanks Jill um, our next oh, session sorry. is a oh yes sorry sorry Wendy I just want to let people know that I have got my presentation with notes um, uploaded and also there is a discussion space there that if anyone has more thoughts that they'd like to contribute, they're most welcome. Awesome. Thanks, Jill, so much. Um, and our next session, of course, is our final session. So, Jill, you were lucky last. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I'd prefer if this one was used um, for the final recording than the other one. <laughs> it was a bit no worries. Thanks, everyone. See you soon. Okay, thank you.